Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And before we get into this broadcast, which we're going into Damascus, we're going in there because Israel continues to attack uh, Damascus. And I want to share the biblical insights with you. And I know many of you are going to say, Steve, we've heard this before. You've already shared this with us before. But I found some amazing things, though, from the Dead Sea Scrolls that support what I have been teaching on this subject. So let's say maybe you've heard it before, but you're like, "Ah, I don't really know if I can agree with that, Steve. Well, I found the information in the Dead Sea Scrolls that back up what I'm telling you on Damascus becoming a ruinous heap and not being the mind or will of God to begin with. You're going to find it out right out of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So. We're going to get into that in just a moment. First, what I want to do, though, is remind you guys about what YouTube is doing. They're always trying to suppress what we're doing here on Israeli News Live. So they are constantly uh, unsubscribing you, trying to keep you from, uh, you know, from us growing on here. And we want to send YouTube a message that you guys actually do care and you want to see uh, more people to know about this channel. So if you would, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you are. Uh, are subscribed, double check that you're subscribed, double check the notification uh, bell, because so many of you tell me they're not sending you notifications. Uh, If you have to unsubscribe and resubscribe, whatever the case may be, uh, I want to get this thing over that 400,000 mark there, we're 3,000 away, and we should easily be able to do it. I mean, when suddenly YouTube lets it go, we grow a thousand people a week easily. And uh, but they don't want you to know we should be over a million subscribers at this point already. But they're trying to suppress that. Don't want you to know. Also, too, I'd mentioned to you about Patreon. Uh, I just did a new video here. Why will sea levels suddenly rise? Uh, I'm actually examining some things that uh, Mike from around the world said on Paul Begley's program just recently. And I consider it a confirmation. He goes into the CIA involvement of the of the churches. <laughs> what do you know, right? Uh, the the viruses, the sea levels rising. Why? I've shared this stuff with you months and months and sometimes years ago. Uh, so I appreciate what he's saying, but. I I went into this, I go into that with some more information as well so that you can see that this is something we've been sharing with you guys for quite some time. So we'll put the link to Patreon there for you in the description in the event you're not subscribed there and you'd like to be a part of our our group there. All right, let's get right into this. Now I'm going to go to the Dead Sea Scrolls first. Or I'll tell you what, before we do that, let's just look at the, the main part of the scripture that everybody looks at. Damascus is taken away. Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1. We'll start at the very beginning. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus. And the remnant of Aram shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, those of you that have seen me talk about this before, which we go further down, we're going to show you who destroys Damascus, why God is upset with them for doing this. But I've always maintained that the fortress shall cease from Ephraim, is that Ephraim represented the believers of Jesus, or the house of Israel in this case. If you remember Acts chapter 2, verse 36, Peter clearly says, be it known unto you, O house of Israel, this same Jesus whom you have crucified has been made both Lord and Christ. So that multitude of Judeans, not Jews, but Judeans that had gathered from all parts of the world on the day of Pentecost in Israel was the house of Israel. They had believed that Jesus is the Messiah, and they made up many of the believers of Damascus. We're going to get into the covenant that was made between Laban and Jacob. And so therefore, when Israel or Christians or anybody that is for the destruction of Damascus, you're going against God himself. And he prophesied that it would be done that way. So just because the synagogue of Satan, which happens to be the current regime of Israel, including Netanyahu, uh, is bent on destroying, as they say, they're trying to destroy Iran because Iran is building up their proxies inside of Syria. They are killing the believers that are there. 
This is why we see these horrible images of, um, let's see, I don't even know if I even have it up there. Yeah, here we go right here. You know, Damascus has become a ruinous heap in many parts of the cities that have been destroyed by these wars that have been happening over there uh, in Syria for quite some time. So to support what I've been telling you, though, let's take a look at the Dead Sea Scrolls here. Now, we are on uh, 4Q266. And I'm going to back up just a little bit here. We'll go to verse 17 here. The forefathers who testified following him. He loves those who come after them because of them uh, belongs the father's covenant. And because of his hatred of the builders of the wall, his anger it is kindled. And like this judgment will be of all who rejected God's precepts and forsake them and move aside in the stubbornness of their heart. This is the word which Jeremiah spoke to Baruch, son of Neriah the Elisha, to Gehazi, his servant, all the men who entered the new covenant in the land of Damascus. The new covenant. Wow, isn't that interesting? The new covenant. This is what Jesus brought was the new covenant, as Paul so eloquently wrote about. He will not swear by Aleph and Lamed, nor Aleph and Daleth, but by the oath of the use, by the curses of the covenant. Neither should one nation the law of Moses, for it is the full uh, enunciation of the name. All right, we'll stop there on that one there. Now, I'm going to take you to a little further down um, in some of these. And I've actually, you can read these in Hebrew as well. You'll see that it's still going to maintain the same thing. Let's back up to say verse 9. As, as among, and we're going right in here. Let me just, maybe we'll just highlight all this here. As among the last, for they have placed idols in their heart and have placed and have walked in the stubbornness of their heart. For them there shall be no part in the house of the law. They shall judge according to the judgment of their companions who turned round with insolent men, for they spoke falsehood about the just regulations and despised the covenant. And the pact which they established in the land of Damascus, which is the new covenant, and neither for them nor their family shall there be a part in the house of the law. And from the day of the gathering of the unique teacher until the end of all the men of war who turn back with the man of lies, there shall be 40 years. Now notice that teacher, that, that new teacher. I believe that's speaking of Jesus Christ. All right. With the man of lies, there shall be 40 years. And this is the age of wrath of God will be kindled against Israel. As he said, there shall be no king, nor prince, nor judge, no one who reproaches injustice, but those who revert from, from the sin of Jacob, who have kept the covenant of God. They're quoting from Hosea 3, 4. Notice what he said, though, there. Right? Let's see. The gathering of the unique teacher until the end of all the men of war who turned back. With the man of lies, there shall be 40 years. And this age, the wrath of God to be kindled, the wrath of God was to be kindled against Israel. As he said, there shall be no king, no prince, nor judge, no one who reproaches injustice, but those who revert from the sin of Jacob have kept the covenant of God. That's what Titus, the Roman general, did. And that is clearly showing you that Titus, the Roman general, was acting, bringing judgment on Israel for what they did to Jesus. They shall then speak each to his fellow, acting just with one's brother, so that their steps become steady in the path of God. And God will pay attention to their words and will listen. It will be written in a book of remembrance before him for those who fear God and think on his name until salvation and justice are revealed to those who fear God. All right, now let's continue. Let's go a little further down. Now, this one we're going to have to back up, 4Q266. You have to back up a little bit, catch the last part here. All right. 
We'll start with verse 8. Israel stray, and they raised the countryside, which means burn it down. For they spoke of the rebellion against God's precepts through the hand of Moses and also of the holy anointed ones. They prophesied deceit in order to divert Israel from following God. But God remembered the covenant of the forefathers, and he raised from Aaron men of knowledge and from Israel wise men and made them listen. And they dug the well, as Moses said, a well which the princes dug, which the nobles of the people dealt with the staff. The well is the law. And those who dug it are the converts of Israel who left the land of Judah and lived in the land of Damascus, all of whom God called princes, for they all sought him, and their renown has not been repudiated. Oh my gosh, are you serious? These are the believers. They had to leave the land of Judah and go live in Damascus. And that's exactly what we find in Isaiah here. See, the fortress shall also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus. Why? Because they were going to destroy Damascus. And when Damascus is destroyed, you will have effectively destroyed the true believers that had once lived in the land of Judah, or their descendants in this case. And I'm not saying that Orthodox Christianity of Syria is the right version of Christianity, but the point is, is their descendants are reckoned in the word of God. Now, before we go into what happens here and who's responsible, let me remind you, and this is a warning, a dire warning to both Christians and to the Israeli government, Netanyahu, <clears throat> the prime minister of Israel, to the president Biden, who will back you in a war that would destroy Damascus because you're trying to target the Iranians. The true synagogue of Satan, or the gathering of Gog, is the current regime in Israel. Now, watch what this says here. We are in Genesis chapter, I think it's 31. Yep, chapter 31. Remember the story about how Jacob had deceived his father-in-law, got all this great riches and stuff. He was living in Syria. Jacob, his wives... Leah was the first one. He wanted Rachel, but he got tricked. You know, Laban tricked and gave him Leah. He got Rachel. He got Bela and Zilpah, their handmaids. And he ended up having children by all four of these women. All four of these women are Syrians. Even the scripture says that Abraham was a Syrian. The scripture says that Laban was a Syrian. So in this case here, the Syrian people are in a covenant, they're literally in a covenant, uh, excuse me, not a covenant, uh, the Syrian people are, back it up, get my brain to work right here, I apologize, the Jewish people of today are half Syrians as a result of that relationship, because all the matriarchs are Syrian. I mean, that in itself alone we should take into great consideration. So anyway, Jacob is fleeing back to his home country, going back to the to what we would call the modern state of Israel. He's taking his wives with him. He takes all the cattle that he got. He deceived his father-in-law. Of course, his father-in-law deceived him. So, I mean, it's kind of like payback, right? I get it. But Laban overtakes him. And they're right around the border. In fact, if you were to look at a map there, let me just see if we can put, pull that up there. Um, let's see. Map Israel. I'll just see if I can't. Here we go, right there. That ought to give us a good enough view. Um, let's just view the image here. If you go right up here, you can see my cursor here near Beit Shean, right in that area right there. It's actually in modern-day Jordan. This is where, uh, that was actually part of Syria at the time, by the way. But when, when Jacob was, he had left Damascus area, or roughly wherever he was in Syria, he came back down, and right in this area, right here, this is where he began to, uh, let me blow that up. It was in these mountains here is where Jacob and Laban, Laban overtook him, and they built this altar there. 
All right, so they built an altar, and according to the scripture, what he says here, and now come, let us make a cup. Let me back to verse 43. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, The daughters are my daughters. The children are my children. The flocks are my flocks. And all you see is mine. And what I can do this day for these, my daughters, or for the children whom you have uh, born. And now come, let us make a covenant, I and you, and let it be for a witness between me and you. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. All right. Laban says, let's make the, this, this, this altar as a covenant. And Jacob places the first stone. So Jacob is entering into a covenant with Laban. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. And they did eat there by the heap. And Laban called it uh, Jagar Sarutha, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is, is a witness between me and you this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid and Mizpah. For he said, The Lord watch between me and you when we are absent one from another. In other words, even though they have died and they've long been asleep, right? That's what he's talking about. Now, you might, you might say, oh, no, it just means like you're over there and I'm over here. But I think it also carries down. But he says, if you shall afflict my daughters, and if you shall take wives besides my daughters, no man being with us, see, God is a witness between me and you. And Laban said to Jacob, behold this heap and behold the pillar which I have set between me and you. This heap be a witness, and the pillar be a witness, that I will not pass over this heap to you, and you shall not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. There you see that? You're not going to pass over the heap. It is a covenant. It is a covenant between Syria, between the Jewish people and the Syrian people, that there would be no passing over to do harm one to the other. And granted, Syria has broken that covenant as well. But it wasn't under Bashar al-Assad, under his father's tenure. But Bashar al-Assad did not cross over there to attack Israel. But Israel has constantly attacked Syria since then. The synagogue of Satan, and by the way, that's not all the Jewish people. There are a lot of good Jewish people that live in the land of Israel that would never want to do any harm to the Syrian people. But this evil group has gotten in there and they're doing exactly that. They're attacking the Syrian people. They have broken the covenant that was made between Jacob and Laban. And Laban said, let God be a witness when he said, if you take any other wives than my, my daughters for your wives, God be a judge to you. And what has Israel done? They did. They took other wives. This group in here, they, married, they brought in the Vatican for a wife. They brought in uh, uh, the United States for a wife. Political powers they have brought in. And he says, The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judged between us. Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, and Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mountain. So see, there was a covenant that was made. And that covenant, people want to say, I've got a good friend of mine. His whole family works with Mossad. And he got upset about this. He says, I don't care about the covenant that Laban and Jacob made. Well, you know what? God cares about that covenant. And he cared enough that not only that, when you read Isaiah, we find out as you go further down, that covenant is going to be broken. Let's look at verse 6. Yet there shall be left their gleanings as the beating of an olive tree, two or three berries in the top of the uppermost bow. That's what's going to be left over after all this happens. In other words, there's going to be some that will survive, but not many. Four or five in the branches of the fruitful tree, and the Lord, the God of Israel, uh, says the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day shall a man regard his maker, and his eyes shall look uh, unto the Holy One of Israel, and shall not regard the altars of the work of his hands. Neither shall he look... To, to that which his fingers have made, either his Asherim or the sun images. Why? Because there were a lot of that evil things that were brought into Syria as well. That's clearly written in the Dead Sea Scrolls as well as the Bible. It says, but in that day shall his strong cities be as the forsaken places, which were forsaken from before the children of Israel after the manner of the woods of lofty forests, and it shall be a desolation right? That's exactly what I was showing you here in these different images here with Syria. It has become a desolation. 
just like Ukraine is becoming a desolation as well. All right, so we continue on and let's look at what happens. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation. That speaks specifically to the Jewish people of today that are willing to attack and destroy Damascus, the God of your salvation. Ki shechat Elohai Yeshuach. You have forgotten the God of your salvation, O Israel. But it doesn't just limit it to Israel. And you have not been mindful of the rock of your stronghold. Have we forgotten who the rock is? Let's take and look at the biblical scriptures on this here. See, Christ. See? Jesus Christ is that rock. Let me just bring you down here to where we read on here. Let's take 1 Corinthians 10, 4, right there. Okay, right there is the good one. I believe that's one that we can use. They did eat the, the same and the spiritual meat and did all drink of the same spiritual drink for that drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Remember, I did a teaching on that, the rock that followed the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness journey. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. If Jesus Christ was that rock there, see, notice here, 1 Peter 2, 8. And the stone of stumbling and the rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedience, whereunto also they were appointed. Let me back up. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Um, do I need to back up further? Let me just see here. Well, let's just back up seriously. Let's start with verse 3. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom, whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in the Sion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Wow. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even unto them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Notice they stumble. They stumble. Notice that. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now you are a people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which are war against the soul. Okay, and so we go into a different, different uh, aspect there. All right, but the thing is, but he talked about those that stumbled at that, at that rock. And then what do we have right here? And you have not been mindful of the rock of your stronghold. In other words, they stumbled at who the rock is. Therefore, you did plant ple plants of pleasantness and did set it with slips of a stranger. In the day of thy planting, you did make it grow. In the morning, you did make thy seed to blossom, a heap of bow in the day of grief and desperate pain. It says right here, Uzumarat zar te zarnu. That literally, the zar, that's, that's like a stranger coming in almost like a like a like an adulterous affair and you come in there and you planted that country you planted in a seed you know words, you brought in strangers you brought in these evil men that came in like the white helmets and and all these different fighters from different nations you brought in to undermine the country to destroy the country to break the country down and then ultimately it becomes 
a ruinous heap. All because Christians were not mindful of the rock of their salvation. They forgot who he was. They didn't count that cornerstone precious any longer. And the Jewish people had forgotten the God of their salvation. They forgot that Laban made a covenant not to cross that heap to do harm to their to the ancestry of their own people. And of course, because it's Christians that live there, and, and, and Syria or Damascus becomes that ruinous heap, and the fortress of Ephraim, Ephraim is taken away from being a kingdom, they have forgotten that even in the Dead Sea Scrolls and the converts of Israel who left the land of Judah and lived in the land of Damascus, all of whom God called princes. God called them princes, those that had believed that Jesus Christ were. And Paul was going there to destroy Damascus. Remember that? And the angel of the Lord struck him down on his way there. And he said, he said uh, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who are you, Lord, that I persecute you? He was going to make Damascus a ruinous heap. And God let him know, you don't do that. But today, Christians think they know more. And instead of recognizing the synagogue of Satan, they've joined in with it. They are becoming the Gog that is gathering together. And the Gog of Magog is coming down to destroy what? As the scripture says in Revelation about Gog of Magog, let's, let's take a look at that. Let's, let's quickly look at that one last one in the book of Revelation there, because that's what we need to know about as well. Revelation 20, verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, and Gog and Magog, to gather them together, the battle of the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up into the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints. Saints are the sanctified ones. They are the believers of Jesus, you're not mindful of your rock. I'm Stephen Benoon. Listen, I trust this is a blessing for you. Um, and you can look above the video here. Our website is israelinewslive.org. But, uh, but if what we're saying blesses you in any way, please support the work we do here. Uh, you can buy mail to an Institute PO Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. But the fastest way is just right there online. You can donate online. And we thank you for your kindness and support. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Israeli News Live. Let's get this thing moving. I'm tired of these people suppressing us. Let's show them that it matters. Uh, hit the notification bell. And let's see if we can't make a difference there. Patreon, Israeli News Live. I'll put the link in the description below for you. Like I said, we just uploaded a new video over there. So um, I don't even have it up here on the screen now. But anyway, uh, I think that'll be a blessing for many of you as well. God bless you. Until next, till tomorrow, have a blessed day.